Monte, a Solutions Engineer at PDF Trunk. In this video, I want to wrap up this course and do the last section of it where we're going to be implementing a text extraction endpoint. Now, it's super useful for the use cases where we don't need the whole PDF, and we just need the text from specific pages. Maybe it's to populate our search engine. So here I have a document uh, in front of me where you know we're going to be extracting, uh, extracting uh, kind of first page of it or you know whatever uh, page that the user requests and we're just going to return respond uh, with the text data that we receive. Now you probably played around with a lot of solutions and if you didn't you found the good one uh, because the way the content inside a PDF document is stored is actually can be pretty tricky. So for example here you know the first word of it is final and you know, it could be broken out into several characters, and even though it appears kind of at the start of the document, it can actually be stored, you know, all over the place if we do logical text based extraction. So, here, you know, what PDF Trump done, uh, they, you know, kind of went through and created a reading order extraction. So, the way it appears on the page is the text we're going to get out of it. So, we're not going to get gibberish, but we actually going to get. You know something the way the user would read it and see it that's how we're gonna receive the text okay so let's go ahead and implement so this one should be pretty straightforward one uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead make my code editor bigger and let's do it okay so here right after your thumbnail endpoint which you've probably seen in the previous video uh, we can implement a app.get and uh, the text point I'm thinking is just gonna be called you know, uh, text extract, let's capitalize the E. Okay, and inside of it, uh, it's going to have a function that's going to call with a rec and uh, request response. And yeah, okay. So here, you know, I'm thinking that we need two parameters from the user. Uh, one of the parameters is going to be, you know, the file name that we're trying to extract. And then another one is going to be the page number that we're trying to extract it from. So here, you know, out of the query parameters, let's uh, destruct them out. So we'll say file name and then comma page number. And then uh, this is all coming from the rec that query. And just make sure you have them as parameters here. This is what the function is going to be called with. Also, by the way, in all of my endpoints so far, I haven't been implementing the error checking. I just assume that, you know, when the user is going to be calling it, they're going to be calling with the correct uh, kind of query parameters. Do not rely on the users to be good. Uh, ensure that you return some kind of thoughtful messages uh, back to anybody who's going to be using this API to say, hey, you have file name that's missing or you have page number that's missing. Missing. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to skip it over, but make sure you do so in yours. Okay, and the next one, we're going to set up our input path. Uh, and again, we will need path.resolve, uh, the directory name, just to make it work on both Windows and Linux and Mac. And yeah, inside of it, we'll have it under files. And we'll just pass in the file name that we received. Okay, so perfect. And now for this one, we actually don't need to configure the output path because simply we're gonna be returning the text. So I'm just thinking that we can go ahead and just return the, it's part of our JSON response. And, you know, kind of sending back the JSON makes it pretty easy to work with on the front end. Okay, perfect. So inside of it, let's actually go ahead and write our function that's gonna be executed by PDFnet endpoint uh, so inside of it, so I'll just call it extract text. And it's going to be an arrow function. And I do know that it's going to use some async await, so we'll just kind of declare it right away. And first things first, we want to go ahead and create uh, the doc. So here we're going to call await bfnet pdf doc create from file path and provide the file path of the input path. After that, let's make sure we lock the document and 
it is a asynchronous function, so we'll just call it uh, doc init security handler. And then the next part, this is um, one more line. We want to get the page number of the PDF document. So we will say await PDF uh, doc.get page and pass it in the page number that we did constructed from our query parameters. Okay, great. So the next thing, uh, and again, here, you know, uh, you can check if the page object didn't get created. You can throw an error that invalid range was provided. Okay, so here we want to go ahead and create the new text extractor. Um, so we'll just do so by calling pdfnet text extractor dot create. After that's created, let's define kind of the region of where we want the text to be extracted. Uh, so here uh, we'll just say pdfnet dot rect. So rect is kind of the area or the region we want to extract, and it takes in uh, four parameters: x1, y1, x2, y2, and it's just kind of the notation or the coordinate system inside of PDF documents. So we'll say we want it from zero to zero, and then just kind of default page size for a PDF right here. Okay, now those are pretty standard. I'm kind of grabbing all of the page. I want to make sure that nothing gets missed. If you have uh, the application that you're building where you only know exact the region of the text you want to be extracted and you don't want to kind of extract the text from the whole page, you can actually define kind of more precise rect area. And I'll post a link to the guides uh, about the coordinate system of PDFs uh, for someone uh, wants to kind of dive in and learn a little bit more. So check out the comments uh, and description below. Okay, and then after that, we actually want to kind of begin uh, the extraction uh, on the page that we've just got and with the specified rect uh, region. And after that, uh, let's kind of get the text out of it. So we'll just say const text uh, equals await txt get as text. Now there's a few options available how you want to return. Uh, maybe you want actually not just the text but actual positions uh, within the page, uh, kind of exactly the coordinates within the PDF coordinate system of where the text is at. Uh, you can definitely do so as well. It's super useful for kind of when you're trying to create highlights on the client side and you're like, here's the text that we're returning, here's the kind of the position of that text, uh, maybe highlight it specifically for the user. Okay, so at this point, uh, looks good to me. And then we're actually going to copy uh, this PDFnet endpoint uh, to kind of execute it and respond back. And then instead of um, responding back with an actual file, uh, what we're going to do, uh, we're not going to do uh, any of this. Okay, so in this case, we're not going to be returning an actual file, but we're going to return a uh, JSON uh, that's going to contain the text data extracted from that specific page that we requested. Uh, so instead, our PDFnet endpoint is going to look slightly different. Uh, so instead of here, you know, we just will let uh, the promise go ahead and resolve uh, with no issues. Actually, if you remember correctly, uh, when we were just learning how to handle like default endpoint just with the slash, we sent kind of the status uh, back to the uh, the client with 200, and then we said uh, we're returning JSON uh, with the status of success and data. So actually, let's use something similar in our endpoint right here and paste it here. And instead of data, we're actually going to be returning text. Okay. Perfect, so this looks good to me. We can go ahead and run it and make sure that in the PDFnet run with the cleanup, you're actually passing the extract that text, extract text. Let's go ahead and run it. So we'll say npm start, app is running on local host 4000. So inside of it, this is how the endpoint is gonna look like. Uh, so we called it localhost 4000 slash text extract. And the page parameters are gonna be the file name. And in this case, we wanna hit section.pdf. And then we want to pass in an additional query parameter. In this case, it's going to be the page number. And let's just say it's one. Okay, 
Perfect. So let's go ahead and hit that endpoint. Ah, and we ran into an error. All right, it's time to debug. Now, it's, you know, here we can see the line number that uh, the issue is happening. So line one nine, line 194. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and see what's happening here. You know, I do not see the error, so it would be super helpful to kind of console log it. And right after, you know, we console logged it, let's actually go ahead and try again. Ah, perfect. So this one is a type error. Uh, this is where it's printing. If, if it's really kind of hard to read or see where the error is coming from, make sure that you append something to the front. But yeah, so the first input argument in function get page is of type string, uh, expect a type number. So no worries at all. Uh, our query parameters are a string. And again, uh, different PDFnet APIs take in string or number. In this case, if we're getting page, it makes sense that we should be getting a numeric value. So let's go ahead and cast it. So we'll convert it to a page number. We'll convert it to a number. And, you know, it's restarted. Let's uh, give it one more try. Ah, and perfect. So here, you know, the server automatically restarted itself. The browser refreshed. And here's what we got. So let's actually compare it to the text uh, that we originally got it from the PDF. Okay, so here, let's go ahead and see. And as you can see, yeah, that text does make sense to me. Final file rule, implementing section 508. Perfect. And then here we also have a new line characters to indicate where there's a break in the PDF. And yeah, that looks good to me. So here now we can actually start using this uh, text for search purposes and making user experience in our application much, much better. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned and enjoyed it.